Excellent. Welcome to Truth in Telecoms Podcast 46. We're racing through them. And also thank you for all the words of support that I received on what we do here in Truth in Telecoms at Enterprise Connect. It was really uplifting. Johnny, over to you. Say your truth. Okay. First of all, you're not asking a question about the jacket. <laughs> True. So, it's a little surprising. So, well, Avi Katz who is the architect of Gig Capital, Calera, billions of dollars disappeared. He's the guy that's trying to frame Bill Peters, um, to, is on the board now of the New York Philharmonic, uh -huh. which is probably the largest endowment yep. group in, in New York. So also Alec Baldwin, uh, the actor's on there. So he, he told me if I'd shut up, he'd get me a part in Alec Baldwin's next movie. So I'm, I'm, I'm um, looking to, for all you Europeans, Google it. Um, but let's get into it. But as so, what? I'm just interested what you what character you were going to play. The, the guy that gets shot. <laughs> <laughs> it was hey. an accident. Um, we'll get Go to you, it. Avi, later. Uh, but look, I think Robert Gershman, and really, Robert, I'm speaking to you here. Uh, look, I had a couple conversations with you. I know you through the years from Thorsten. You guys work together. You guys know that. You guys know how you work together to, to fight all the other big, I call you guys oligarchs, just a joking name. You know, you got InfoBit, which IPO's coming. Um, you got, you know, Vonage now, Vonage is mostly Asia. You know, you've got Cinch, they're a monster. Um, and you've got all these little companies and you got this meth. And Robert, look, whatever happened between Pooja and Dario, uh, is really confusing to me. Number one, here's the way I see it. She flew half. She flew across the country. Number two, what do they have to gain? And number three, how did we get here? We got here. Nobody saw the Czar's podcast with me because he buried it on his podcast in the last 40 minutes, right? He's only got 200 views on that, Robert. You haven't seen it, right? At the end of the day, you should watch it because he grilled me. They grilled me. They wanted to poke poking their fingers in me left and right. They wanted to know, who are you? What are you doing? I mean, they didn't know nothing about TCR acquisition. They didn't know nothing about my team. Um, and they grilled me hard. So you guys should all watch that. Alan, I don't know how you want to yeah, I'll put that up. But, I'll it, yep. but what this is really all about, from my perspective, is the czar read a letter that Rick Joyce, my CEO, former chief counsel, head of cybersecurity of the United States Coast Guard, best telecom lawyer ever, wrote to the FCC, and he was baffled by it. And TCR had a response through Latham and Watkins. And the guys at TCR basically admitted they don't do anything at all, right? Now, back to our messaging monopolies piece. Robert, you've got TCR, you've got net number, you've got ages. Those four companies I mean, give or take 40, 50 million a year in revenue. You got you, InfoBet, Vonage, four and a half billion in revenue, right? You're playing in the same circle. You got Dario Betty. You got Calera. If you ask me who I believe, Dario Betty or anybody else on planet Earth, I believe anybody else on the planet Earth. I don't care who it is, except maybe Avi Katz. Um, But besides that, or you know, the, the guy's campaign registry. So look, you're on the board of Reach, Cinch, Robert. You're, you know, you're to, for you to stand up like this without getting the facts and without even talking to me about it, it's pretty disturbing, to be honest with you. Because, like I said in my podcast, I wouldn't want to mess with these guys. They're TCPA lawyers. And at the end of the day, you know, UMail is involved over there with the U.S. people. You know UMail because... Every cease and desist for robocalls or spam texts, which you're going to start, we're going, we're going to get to, are all, all go through email. You got one at a telequit at the end of the day, Robert. You and I, I said the word. You, you, you didn't did. smack me. You didn't, <laughs> smack, you didn't smack me. But people are saying end of the day at the, at the Express Connect, and I felt good about it. But look, um, whatever you guys work out there, but this is really very simple. What has come unfolded here? Is, the, is all of you guys are looking the other way. And Robert, I've sent you information about certain employees in your organization that have done some things that I know you guys would never deal with, right? You're the leader in the industry. Meth, look, I, I said it two podcasts ago, fact check me. It's an important organization. 
But there's no question, Calera, the last, the last board member, Mauro, Dario, the Italians, the whole SPAC bust out. Now, Tata, Tata doesn't even know what they bought. At, at the end. They have no idea what they bought. And the campaign registry, look, they had some heat on them. Why is, why is the FCC interviewing them? Why is this happening? It's, it's, my game is to stop the spamming of Americans. And it's insane. The robocalling is a whole different ball game, And that's already a gazillion dollar industry. You're talking about $4.99 on every bill approved by the FCC for the operators. But messaging, they shifted all your revenues to the tune of billions of dollars. Now, you have an, a, 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 a hub to Verizon. I know you didn't buy SAP's assets for that. You bought it for the enterprise customers that you're growing. And you had to take it over. And look, I understand you're doing a great job, other than maybe some of the people that work for you. But we, as we all know, it's hard. Good people are hard to find. Um, I, I don't know what the czar is going to do, but this is how we got here. We got here. Guys, I'm going to start poking at every one of you guys. Net number. Net number. You know the truth. You, you guys know you're the number. You're the unsanctioned number registry. You know that the campaign registry was set up as a sham. Why aren't you talking? Ages. I, again, I have no comment on you I've, other than watching you on a podcast with Soren uh, at, at Meth with uh, the, the Pirates of Penzance guy from Comdrisk spitting all over himself. Um, other than watching that podcast, I don't have any, but people like you too. I don't know. Um, they had the article in the Detroit News about you controlling the TCR. However you want to look at it. It doesn't work. It's broke. Americans are getting hurt. You guys need to clear your clear clear the table here. Um, it does not work. You need to watch the podcast that Czar put out. I think it was 23 or 24 on Czar's channel. Uh, he's got a big audience. Pooja, why would this girl lie? What does she have to benefit? So I'm talking to you, Robert. Just you. One guy. New chairman. Because I want to see you win at the end of the day. I want to see the industry get back. But I'm going to point at every one of you guys. Who's on that board? Cineverse. Why so Cineverse? <laughs> Czar brought up uh, the Dark Knight. He doesn't, he doesn't even know. Why so Cineverse is there. Who else do you have on there? InfoBips involved. China Mobile's there. Meth, you have a registry in, in, in the UK. How does that work? What, what, what's going on there? Do you have a registry? You're marketing to other registries. So what are you? You're a registry. You're a catering hall. You're thought leadership for the USA. But all our monopolies are going over there because there's no organization over here for them other than the Cloud Communication Alliance, which is a little bit different and, yeah. and, and whatever. Uh, we'll call them white man can jump organization. And then you got the CTIA that I, I still, for the life of me, don't know what's going on there. A lot of good people at MEF, Robert. I think you need to get your facts. Dario, I'm not calling you a liar here, but you and I both know the conversations me and you had. Uh, uh, going on. And I told you straight to your face. Um, and look, I think Dario had good intentions with me too. I think he didn't understand everything that was going on with Calera and really the treachery involved over there and what they did to Bill Peters. But every one of your companies, I'm going to poke at because just like I poked at Twilio. Here, here's a change bar. Robert, I could buy four shares in your stock with this. Your company was worth $20 billion. You're down to two. I want you to get back. You can get back. I, I, I kind of talked about that in a post the other day. There has to be a consolidation. But for, for, for to come out, call these people liars, I, I, first of all, I actually want to know what happened right now. But for my money, watch my podcast, they tried to rip me. And then they decided, do we believe them? Do we not believe them? My credibility was at stake, which is fine, which is the way it should be. But um, I would uh, double back on this. We have some good news in the industry. We have bandwidth is looking good. Bandwidth, you're there too. I know you're not you're not down with this, what's going on here at the registry. Czar started pointing about freedom of speech, what's in a text, what's not in a text. That's a slippery slope that he can handle. M me and my group can't. But the foreign ownership, un unquestionable. Alan reposted something today about 14 hackers being caught and what's going on. We're living in a new world. There's wars, there's travesties everywhere. There's destruction, it's horrifying. And we happen to be the SMS industry. And, and I happen to really care mostly about the scamming of people. That just shouldn't be, especially our kids. So 
I, I basically, you know, laid that out, Alan. And now I think it's important for you to talk a little here, Alan, because look, you went all in. You believed her. Absolutely. You, 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 know, you, you believed her. You know, yep. you, you posted about it. You read about it. Yep. So how, do, how do you feel about this? Are we idiots? Are we the joke here? Who's the idiot here? Well, I don't think we are. There's no idiots. Who no, there is. There is idiots. Uh, right now, well, the, there's, there's an idiot. useful there's, idiots. Who's, who's the idiot? <laughs> I just don't see what they benefit. And anytime you do something, there has to be a benefit. What's their benefit? I thought they made a deal. Something happened. I, I mean, I, Jeff Pulver was po po post posting with the great Jeff Pulver with Glenn Richards, great yep. attorney, happened to be the TCR's lawyer. I don't yeah. even think he know it didn't didn't work. Um, yeah. I still got to put that piece out with the CFIUS, uh issue there. Exactly. And look, the bottom line here, guys, this is about the cover up, the cover up of the TCR ages, net number. Even I connected. Exactly. Somos, you guys all know. Cineverse, you know, I've had conversations with you guys. It doesn't do anything. We all know it doesn't do anything. And Twilio, I'm saving you for last because <laughs> you had an 80% discount. Yeah. What was that all about? What happened to the numbers at that point? Mm -hmm. Were the spam filters lifted? Why is it a nightmare right now? Yeah. And I'm going to get to you, Twilio, and Twilio CEO. By the way, you're doing a good job. Also got some word that he was pushed out by the new CEO, which I got to confirm on. Again, it's it's irrelevant. Yeah. And what's relevant here, Robert, is I, I I just can't. That's not you. Yeah. And you're 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 a founder of a trade publicly traded company, the most profitable, largest CPAS company in the world, according to you. You said it because you walked it. You got two women. You got a CEO as a woman, and you got my all time favorite Virginia Debris running the ship, right? So I definitely know. You're not a male chauvinist. And I'm not saying there's any male chauvinist. I'm getting a lot of comments from a lot of people. But something happened. Yeah. I believe what happened is Czar kicked the hornet's nest on TCR. And TCR, net number, ages, sponsor a lot of parties. Six-figure parties. Right? Where the multi-billion dollar companies aren't. And Robert, I'm sure when you were worth $20 billion, you were sponsoring some of those parties. So I'm done, done with you guys. But I'm going to go company for company because, Meth, you're just a catering hall to me. But you're a catering hall with a registry. And you may want to take a look at your board. And you may want to pay attention to what's going on every day uh, out there. So I think that's 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 my piece. And watch the podcast I had with Czar yep. where they grilled me. Because we're not going away. Rick will be back in a couple of weeks. We're not going away. And we're going to keep going. But now... AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, antitrust all day long. And it is what it is. Yep. And it's wrong. Right. It's, and then the T-Mobile, the T-Mobile finds are, and I'm talking to you on this one, and, and the industry. I mean, that's completely insane. They could come out there and find you guys 4,000 per text. 4,000 per text, right? Yep. Here, regulatory authorities are responsible for enforcing business laws and regulations. These authorities monitor compliance, investigate violations, and impose penalties for noncompliance. The specific regulatory bodies may vary depending on the jurisdiction and industry. Not a foreign-known wires carrier, T-Mobile. You just can't go be putting fines on people or threatening it when, when you did that the letter with bandwidth. Those guys are public. They're fighting for their lives. They got caught on a downturn. They got great assets. I called them on, on their, their getting they're getting back to to uh, to uh, uh, a unicorn, again, as far as market cap, which is important. Market yep. cap matters. I yep. think people got to get behind bandwidth. They got great assets. You guys all know it uh, at the end of the day. And they're all you're all different. You have a lot of flavors. There's going to be some consolidation needed. And, you know, let me know if, who wants to buy Tintech. <laughs> Actually, who wants to buy out all of us from Tintech and keep Dorsey? Because, you know, I'm still trying. And I know everything because I tried to sell it to every one of you guys. I led the charge with Scipio Partners and Roland Denner. Yeah, hi, Roly. Uh, and then he got his pants pulled down by Thorsten. And Thorsten pulled down GMS's pants. 14 months with them in due diligence. GMS, another great company, right? I'm tired of hearing all the stuff I get. Guys, stop telling me bad things about everybody because this is the industry. And InfoBit, they're backed by J.P. Morgan. Do you think J.P. Morgan would back them if they were so bad? I'm tired of you people. I'm tired of all of you. 
AIT, not whose fault is it? It's the mobile operators. And they're all going broke. There's a great report that I'm going to send out to you guys on how even in most countries, you know, there's consolidation with the MNOs. There's no money. Yeah. It's a race to zero. And and they need every penny. So you guys got to figure that out on your own. But Robert, new chairman, I was hoping to, to, to join. Dario told me I could pay and I could join. I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll say we're our lane over here. I'm not interested. But I do want awareness, Robert, and from you too. I want awareness on the campaign register. If I don't get it, I'm going to start looking at your books uh, at the end of the day, everywhere else. I'm going to start poking until this shakes out. Unless Avi Katz want to come, wants to come and clean this thing up, or somebody at the campaign registry wants to point to somebody else. But we have a new fight, and that fight is for the American public being spanned. And some people are going to come because now we can lay it out. Yeah. Full exactly. stop. And I'm, there's going to be some blasts from the past and some very credible people in this industry uh, that built some very serious companies coming out and talking with us. So watch this space. I need, I, I need to go to uh, yes, the, that's right. the Philharmonic. Oh, and get your audition. <laughs> <laughs> Take so, care, Johnny. All right, buddy. Bye-bye, kid. It's time for what I can assure you is going to be a rough, rough and rocky ride uh, as we talk with the COO of uh, the TCR acquisition, and this is Johnny Tarone coming at you to the power of the Troutman Amin LLP law firm, and mostly because MEF pissed me off. And now, through the power of the Troutman Amin LLP law firm, we've got a real trip for you today. We've got Johnny Tarone, CEO of TCR Acquisition, and boy, oh boy, does he have a story to tell you. Johnny, welcome to the show, man. Uh, people know me as my legal name, Giovanni. I am the chief of staff and COO of TCR Acquisition, uh, which was a company started by myself and uh, Frederick Rick Joyce, who was the former chief counsel, head of cybersecurity for the United States Coast Guard. After spending 40 years as the chair for the telecom communications practice at Venable, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, you really walked into uh, the right place or in the wrong place for a lot of people. Oh, look, man, we're just here to have fun, Johnny. This looks like a lot of fun to me. Um, so, so tell us, what is TCR acquisition? What does it do? Why did you form it? Give me the background here. So um, a couple of years ago, a friend of mine, his name is uh, Major Bill Peters. He is the founder, the original founder of the campaign registry. He also founded what is now called Cinch which is the Interop, was the first Interop messaging company in the world. So the company had actually interconnected the other mobile operators many, many years ago. Uh, it was called Sybase 365. Bill was actually the original founder of that. So I got a call from him one day on a Wednesday saying, hey, and I, I was working with him on another project and trying to sell a company that I'm the largest debt holder, which is a company called Tintech. Uh, which is a major messaging aggregator out of Europe. So but I'll give you a little brief history. So I, I, I just so you understand my history with TCR and Rick Joyce. Many years ago, I restructured a company called Iris Wireless LLC. Uh, and that was one of the three messaging hubs in the U.S. So in the U.S., when you send a text message between AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, you had Cineverse, you had a company called SAP, which is now Cinch, and you had a company called Iris Wireless. Um, and those are the three companies that interconnect all the mobile operators um, with each other on P2P messaging. Now you have this phenomenon of A2P messaging, which I'll get to, which is really just the operators monetizing A2P messages and stealing that business back from Twilio and all the other companies that created the phenomenon of what you call CPAS today. Because uh, you're both, so I restructured this company called Iris Wireless. Uh, Rick Joyce was my attorney at Venable. They were 100% owned by the Carlisle Group, no slouch. I won the last failure to deal lawsuit in the USA. I beat Cineverse, beat you Cineverse, uh, with Rick Joyce. And um, then ended up restructuring a company called Tintech out of Germany which is still running, uh, brilliant messaging aggregator, although don't get me started on the Germans because that's the only, the only people I have a problem with on the whole earth. But besides that, they're still operating today. They ended up taking my agreements, which are were unique, unique agreements. So 
we paid. There was no cost between us to send Johnny, messages. Johnny, sorry, I, I may be losing it. I'm just trying to figure out TCR acquisition. What does it do? TCR acquisition was formed uh, by uh, myself and, and Rick Joyce. So Bill Peters came to me. He was one of the three founders of the campaign registry, which was owned by a company called Calera. And he came to me and said, look, they're, they're allowing us to do a management buyout. I need you to raise capital for me to do this buyout with my partners. So Rick Joyce had just retired from the Coast Guard. And I said, Rick, take a look at this deal, right? So I sent it to Rick. <laughs> he took a look at it. No lie. He said, Johnny, they can't own this. Because I don't have, you know, security clearances like Rick. Rick had the highest security clearance you can have in this U.S. government. And he said, they can't own this. They're not allowed to own this for these specific reasons, which a lot of it you saw in your brilliant analysis of Rick's letter to the FCC. So started dealing with the management at the campaign registry. It kind of went awry. And then we got into a press release fight. Rick basically offered them 20 million for the registry, sell it, you can't own it. Then it went into a complete fire storm of press release after press release after press release, which is a long drawn out story. So TCR acquisition was set up by, and it's kind of funny, we called it TCR acquisition, like we're gonna acquire the TCR. Why? Because it should not be in your hands. Uh, Calera with the certain ownership structure it had which we can get into deeper and then we, this is all documented. So that's how TCRA was started. Rick brought in the Admiral. I brought in, I brought in a couple of the smartest guys in the industry that if you look at some of those bios, uh, the guys that um, created the caller ID in a company called Sequent that was sold to TNS many years ago and a bunch of other in, industry experts. Um, and that's how the TCRA was started. Basically okay. to acquire an asset that was foreign owned, that was critical infrastructure from Rick's perspective and the Admiral's perspective. Um, that's why that's when it was created for that specific reason. So for our viewers, so TCRA, right, or acquisition as we're calling it, it was a company that was formed specifically to target and purchase the campaign registry, which as Johnny has pointed out, has been foreign owned kind of from the start. But what Johnny, what is the campaign registry? Why, why should people be concerned about being foreign owned? Like, what does it do? Okay. What does it really do? Or what was it defined to do? Because this is where you might lose your hat. So the campaign registry was originally an RFP back in 2013 by Verizon that ended up being won a few years later by a company called iConnective and the CTIA, right? So CTIA and iConnective won this bid for the campaign registry. And what it really was, was the mobile operators telling the FCC, we don't want to regulate text messaging. We like the way it is. We're going to create this thing called the campaign registry. We're going to self-regulate. We're going to stop this spam on our own, right? And that was in the original uh, way it was supposed to be set up the campaign registry. Now, as we know, it doesn't work. And they've actually admitted to the FCC through Latham that they don't really serve any purpose. It's just write your name on a piece of paper. And basically what it's become, and I'll give you some staggering numbers, is a way where the mobile operators were are now able to charge an A to P message for a half a penny for a registered campaign and a penny per text for spam. So if you're registered, half a penny. If you're not registered, a penny. And to put that into perspective, so the marble operators took something that they were making no money on, the Twilios of the world, the Cinches of the world, the Plevos of the world, the Ring Centrals of the world. <clears throat> they were actually making the bulk of the margin, which is one of the reasons why you saw the phenomenon of the $80 billion market cap that Twilio had. And the carriers systematically set up this campaign registry after they got away with doing it with the 800 registry, which was Zipwick, right? So this is a complicated series of events that I that it's important for you and your audience to understand just how you know uh, 
brazen the mobile operators were. Well, hang on, hang on, Johnny. Let's go, let's go piece by piece, though. I just want to go piece by piece. So my understanding of the TCR is it operates like this. Uh, short code messaging, right, which everyone is familiar with, has for many years existed where aggregators can provide short code capabilities that allow high uh, throughput for large businesses that want to send mass text messages. However, in order to get a short code, you've always had to go through a pretty significant vetting process to demonstrate what your use case is, who you're going to communicate with, and what your uh, consents essentially look like. Uh, and the short One code. Conversation. One way conversation. One way conversation. And the short code issuers, right, uh, were, were pretty cautious. Uh, and as time has gone on, though, right, less short codes are available. Um, they're, they're just basically not the way that businesses want to communicate A to P with consumers anymore. Increasingly, right, 10 DLC, that's 10 digit long code, uh, was the channel that businesses were turning to. Now, from a P to P perspective, right, there has always kind of been plenty of throughput availability. But from an A to P perspective, this is where I believe, right, and I'm looking to you as kind of the guy that was there on the ground. This is just kind of me as, as the, uh, the legal guy looking from, from 50,000 feet. It seems to me that TCR was kind of industry's response to develop a short code like apparatus for 10 DLC with the creation of the campaign registry. Is that That's what, it, what it was intended to do, or at least told to the FC to do, because as you know, voice is regulated. I, I read some piece where you talk about the SMS not being uh, an IP service. I, I actually agree with you, but it's it kind of is. I, I, no, I, I need to get you started on it because it's important that you keep that in the back of your mind because you're going down the right place. So the short code registry is highly profitable. It's owned by iConnective and it pays off CTIA, which is really the the how do I use this without uh, offending anybody here? It's kind of like the, the the slaves for the mobile operators that they hide behind and pretend that they're not colluding uh, with each other. The CTIA is there to keep them from antitrust suits. When antitrust used to be a thing, now it's out the window, do whatever you want. And that's what has happened over here because of the TCR. When we originally started looking at the campaign registry, we knew it didn't work. Rick was like, all right, we got to take this out of foreign ownership and we'll get into that and you know, make it work. So even the founder, Bill Peters, was like, look, they're not even implementing numbers. It doesn't work. You can rotate numbers. You can spam. That's why there's 10 times the amount of spam now that there was before because it doesn't work. So. But the, but the concept, Johnny, Johnny, sorry, but the, the concept was campaign registry was going to require a similar onboarding circumstance as short code, maybe not quite as robust, but essentially anyone that wants to send A to P texting over a 10 DLC channel would have to register as the name implies. Not anyone, not anyone. Cineverse, Cineverse doesn't have to do it. The operators don't register. It's who they decide. So this is where we're going down further when you understand how crippling this has been to small businesses and to other companies. It's arbitrary. Who has to register? Who doesn't have to register? Twilio got an 80% discount on all those vetting fees when they first got in just to grab them in. So that's where it gets a little bit more complex. You're correct on your assessment on it was supposed to be follow the short code registry. But a short code registry you're registering directly with the operators. Over here, you're registering with the campaign registry. There's no numbers, there's no tracking. You're giving them their information. God knows where it is, but who has it? Great, so let's go there, because that's kind of what we're driving at, right? So this registry would require people to come um, and actually alert, and I understand you're saying not everybody, some people you know, get, get little passes. This is something we're talking about. There's a, a real licensing scheme here in terms of who's being treated, oh, favor who's being treated favorably and who isn't. I wish I had one of my guys on with you because he would blow your mind. And that's a but, conversation you should have offline. But um, who, for, for the folks who are, and, I, and I'm going to take you at face value there, I think that's true. Some people are registering, some people don't have to register, some people get special treatment when they register, fine, whatever. But those who are registering, they have to provide information about their campaigns, who they're contacting, and why. And that includes political messaging. A am I right about that? That's the biggest problem. So if you read Bill Peters' complaint that he filed with Robbins Kaplan as their attorneys, you'll see that there has already been messages blocked in the whole state of Arizona, parts of California. We've got recordings with T-Mobile trying to put 
their viewpoint on who should be getting messages or not. You have one political vetting company, a company called Aegis Mobile. There was an article in Real Clear Policy that I, I wish you guys, I wish we'd have sent that to you as well. Uh, they're owned by one political side of the fence. It's, it's such a mess that once you really get your head around it and your audience understands it, they're going to be coming out with pitchforks. So, but I want to go back to your concept of the TCR, what it was intended to be and what it became. So what the campaign registry became was just, it was, first of all, it was, it's not, it's not, it's owned by the campaign registry, but it's controlled by the three major operators and three people that have been working together for many years, mid-level at the operators, colluding, calling each other, talking with each other, breaking every antitrust rule ever known to man, which we can get into that conversation later, which I wanted to get off with, get on to with you offline. And they created this campaign registry to do one thing from my perspective, my team's perspective, and people within the know that are not too happy that we're talking to people like you right now, right? And that is, in, 20, in 2022, the revenue for ADP messages, 2021 was zero. 2022 was roughly 22 billion. Out of that 22 billion, AT&T paid close to 8 billion on dividend, a lot of numbers. We're math guys. I, markets, numbers, math. I back our data up with numbers. Um, T-Mobile, 1.5 billion. Verizon, 11.17 billion. Almost equivalent. So they're paying dividends with money that before was a person-to-person -person message. What's an A to P message? It's a person-to-person -person message that they decide, nah, it's a business. It's not a business. Fill this out. Fill that out. It's so convoluted. And the, role, the rules are so convoluted that it literally inhibited the growth of Twilio, even though they were getting an 80% discount and they have it in their earnings call. It's all documented. They've literally, Jeff Lawson and all of them said, oh, we're, we're not, our growth stopped. Their growth stopped, bang, $3 billion of market cap down the tubes. Right? So, so that's so just, so I know I'm going, going. John, stay with me. Just stay with me, man. We got to go piece by piece here, man. You, you keep kind of going to a different okay. place. I'm just trying to get my, my viewers educated on the basics, man. Okay? Just stick with me. Basics are, at least the way it's supposed to be set up, TCR is a vetting program for folks that want access to the 10 DLC network for A to P text. You cannot text in this country at this point, at scale, unless you are either short code clear or TCR clear. There is no other path to the American SMS network. Is that correct? Let's just start there. Is that right? Depending on who you know. Depending on who you know, right? For just a normal old business, you got one of these two paths, right? So all your customers and consumers are, are down the path of hell. So if you go to TCR, right, you've got to register. You've got to show them who you are. You've got to show what you're going to text. You've got to show the content of your message. You've got to lay all of this out before you have the right to speak in this country. And then TCR gets to decide, am I right? Is this going to be approved yep. or is it not going to be approved? Now, now this is kind of what I wanted to get to, right? Because you created a company specifically designed to take over this apparatus, which I respect because as you tell the story, right? And I, you know, again, I, I am trying to get to the facts here. TCR, this incredibly important gateway to the American uh, text message infrastructure that, that is, has data on, it sounds like every text message campaign, including political messaging, in this nation, yeah. that's A to P on a 10 DLC network, which is what 80% of the messages these days, I think, right? Huge, huge, huge numbers. And all this information now is in a company that is foreign owned. It, it's not, just, not, not, just, not just not just foreign owned. The entire tech team talks in Mandarin. Not that I have anything against Mandarin. So it was owned by an Italian company called Calera, which had Chinese ownership in it when it went public in the USA which is in all our documents and press releases and open and open letters. So if you go to tcracquisition.com, you'll see a couple of our press releases. You'll see our open letter. You'll see what you read to the FCC. So, you know, look, there's also a CFIUS letter that we put out uh, where the founder of the campaign registry is a whistleblower, full blown. Okay. So Major Bill Peters is a whistleblower. 
He went to the FCC, went to the NSA, which I don't even know how you go to the NSA, went to the FBI, he went to the police. They tried to frame him on a net- network break in. And I know this sounds fantastical to your audience, and it is, but it's all in a federal complaint filed by Robbins Kaplan, whom you know is an extremely reputable plaintiff firm out of Minnesota, um, not in the telecom space, but uh, I think they just got $6.8 billion settlement out of Visa uh, on one case. Really smart guys. Um, and this is all out there. This is all in the public domain. We, we tried to give you as much information as we could in a short period of time, because what you did, nobody's ever done. Nobody's ever read something that Rick wrote and just broke it down into most simplistic form and laid it out. You're right. They hired arguably the most powerful law firm in the world. Right. Why? Because they're cooked. Because they're cooked. They're cooked. Like you said, they're cooked. They're beat. They're wrong. The mobile operators don't know what to do right now. We've gone to the mobile operators. Rick Joyce. Rick Joyce represented the mobile operators. I mean, Rick built a quarter billion dollar a year telecom practice from divestiture. Uh, Rick, the admiral, who was a chair after him. These are not like regular. These are serious attorneys, not like some of the attorneys that keep begging me for you to unblock them uh, (laughs) because it's pretty funny, actually. Um, you got a lot of fans out there and all of them talk good about you. So this is a really... So I want to take a step back, if you don't mind, sir, because I really need you to understand it. The country needs you to understand. But, but, but Johnny, before before you go there, I need you to understand something, (laughs) which is you you guys might be onto something, right? No, no, we are are onto something. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna unravel it. Johnny, stay with me. You might be onto something, but if we, if you keep like wandering around, like I'm trying to ride a bull, keeping you in in the lane, right? People are gonna have a tough time following you, right? As I look at this, there's a story here, right? There's a reason I'm covering this. And, you know, look, TikTok right now is being investigated by Congress for its foreign ownership and the capabilities of China to get access to TikTok, consumer data. TikTok will be, right? will be sold off. Will be sold off or shut down. Well, and that's my point, is to me, there's shades of TikTok with TCR for what I'm seeing. This, I'm this is actually thing. worse. It's worse. But, but, I mean, look, maybe there's going to be congressional investigations here at some point. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but maybe, but maybe it does. But in order for us to get someplace like that, we need guys in the know like you, right, to just kind of take this piece by piece without kind of diving into, you know, the shadowy conspiracy stuff, which I'm not saying isn't true. I'm just saying right now, let's just stick to kind of like the basics, the hard facts that we know, right? We've got a company that is foreign owned that now has access, not just access to, but ultimately control over the messaging platforms here in the United States and determines essentially through, to your correct assumption and and statements, uh, black box formulas, maybe through collusion of three individuals at carriers, as you were mentioning, maybe through some other God knows what process or algorithm they're using decides who is able to speak and who doesn't. And then correct me if I'm wrong, they're doing something called assigning trust scores. Now, I've been seeing this in a couple of years, but I saw a couple of years ago something called a trust <laughs> score that was being assigned by the TCR. I mean, is that something that's still going on? Yeah, it's, it's insane. And unfortunately, your audience and yourself, it's not maybe onto something. We are onto something. We've unraveled something. That's why the Queenie was tossed. That's why you lit up a hornet's nest. And uh, we've been kind of waiting. Rick wrote that letter to the FCC. And let's start there. Right. But now we, 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 we did a piece called the messaging monopolies. We did the triopoly piece. We posted it. We wallpapered your post today. Right. Because there's a lot of information that you guys have to go through. It's not as easy as one, two, three. But overall, basic You nailed it again. That's why I was praying. And I know you're busy. you got thousands of clients around the country that you're helping. You guys got your own life. You're out there protecting all those consumers. And that's why I was kind of hoping by a miracle that you would read some of the stuff that we sent because we, we documented everything. So this is not Johnny Tyrone telling you. These are all facts. These are all federal complaints. These are all written out and have not been disputed once by anybody in the industry. I had to start a podcast with the only guy that would talk to us. It was a guy named Alan Quayle called Tad Summit. Alan runs the largest hackathon for 
programmable telecoms outside of Twilio, right? Smart guy. Thousands. Smart huh? guy. He's a smart guy. He's, well, well I, the whole industry knows he's smart, but he's also honest. So he's like, Johnny, let's start Truth in Telecoms. Uh, and we'll also we'll, we'll, we'll do a focus on our innovative companies. We started with 300 subscribers. We got to 18,000 subscribers after like seven or eight because the MEF was telling everybody, don't listen to them. Don't read what they write. Don't. It was designed not to work. It was designed for one purpose, to take the money back on person-to-person -person messages, which is at zero cost, and monetize it to billions of dollars for the operators. Well, I'm going to suggest, so I'm going to, I'm going to suggest something else, Johnny. And I don't know this, but you know, what you just said is actually pretty stunning which is it was designed not to work. I like that. But I don't know that it was designed for money because if you stop and you think about it, right, as Latham's letter even admitted, right, the carriers are actually foreign-owned, right? And if you stop and consider, and, and again, I'm not, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that this is true. I'm not saying this is not true. I don't know, right? But if you stop and consider how powerful something like TCR is, Right in terms of documenting American speech patterns, American business, and what we're doing, and American political campaigns, and what they're doing, you know, if you're if this is designed not to work, I'm going to tell you, Johnny, I don't think it's designed to make money. I think it's designed to create visibility. I think it's designed to give a massive spy window. You know what this is? You know what this is? This is in the dark night, right? When they turned every single phone into a sonar device to let Batman sit back there through Lucius Fox and see everything that's going on everywhere. That's essentially what the TCR might be, a window into the operations of every business here in this country that foreign powers can look into. Now, I'm not saying that's what's happening, right? I don't know. What if, what if, what if I told you, what if I told you that China's already in there probing? Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't know, right? What I know, what you pointed out, what Rick Joyce pointed out to the FCC, what they hired Latham to rebut, and what ultimately might have got Puja kicked off a panel, which is why I'm involved, and I'm, now I'm goddamn pissed, right? And I put you, my queenie, my queenie. My yeah, queenie. I mean, see, th see, now, if this is what's going on, right, if this is the whole play, is that ultimately external countries now have visibility into American messaging and not even vis visibility, but ultimately control because they're dictating trust scores, they're dictating who can speak and who can't, and we don't know how or why. To me, that is a very serious issue. And again, when one, you know, let's say, let's say Rick was a nut job, right? He's just a nut job who sent a letter to the FCC. No one pays attention, right? Tree falls in the forest, no one cares. They go and hire Latham and Watkins to respond to this guy. To me, no, 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 now there's smoke, right? Now something is going on. And then a couple of days later, I cover the story and then one of the most prominent lawyers in the country gets thrown off of a panel at MEF. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. We've uh, that's a little, a little bit of a distraction there too. They, they want you out of it. It's a distraction because what you uncovered in that brief clip that you made it like, oh, it was an accident. I didn't even do it on purpose because of your brilliance. What you uncovered with the Latham Watkins, and Rick's not a crack job. This is the former chief counsel, head of cybersecurity for the United States Coast Guard. Okay, this is a guy that has the highest security clearance and 40 years of telecom experience with a resume up and down. So not a crack job <laughs> at the end of the day. But what you're saying, I can't say. Who were not a lot of people would not have done with what Puja did or you did with meth. I mean, these are these are the SMS oligarchs over there. A lot of them that are on some of your boards. At the end hey, of the look, day, you, you can be an oligarch all you want. There's only one czar, all right? And the czar speaks the truth and goes after the truth wherever it is. But Johnny, look, we're running long. I'm gonna have to. I'm, we're gonna have to wrap this up. I'm gonna have you back because I like you, Johnny. I like you a lot. But but we gotta wrap this up. I'm gonna give you a minute, okay? One full minute. Go ahead. I'm pleading to you because. Go ahead. We're we're counting on you to dig in. Get my whole team offline. And we want the czar, Queenie, and the rest of your team with your credibility to Americans. Our marketplace are mostly foreign-owned companies with MEF. These are all foreign companies that own the infrastructure. Cinch owns the P2P messaging hub for Verizon. Now, granted, they're in, they're in NATO right now. These are all foreign-owned entities in the U.S., which you're right. I mean, who knows? We've become numb to it. I'm not... The security expert, Rick Joyce is, the Admiral is, they are. I'm the numbers guy. I can explain to you 
numerically what's going on with my team. So we have a team of different components like you guys do, right? You guys got a winning team. For you guys to uncover, look at, analyze, and make a decision. Be the judge of the information and the facts that we put forth because you're already taking it to another level because you're smart. I go where the truth goes, man, and you don't have to beg me. You don't have to beg me because you know you know who your best friend is? MEF, MEF. They, they just pushed me to a place where I have no problem taking a look at all of this. I'll have you back sometime soon. I appreciate you. Thank you. Well, I told you guys we were going to have fun today. Um, you know, look, I'm, let me just start off by saying I, I like Johnny a lot. This guy... You know, you guys all know me as a world-class litigator. I've deposed hundreds of people. I've done thousands of, of witness examinations, both taking and defending in trial and in deposition over the years. If there's one thing I know, it's when someone's lying to me. Uh, Johnny's not a liar. Now, he has a tendency to wander off script. He has a, a tough time kind of staying in his lane. But I think the reason for that is I, I think this guy's been hurt. I think he's been hurt a lot. I, I think the people uh, that have kind of gone after you, Pooja, um, I think have beat up him pretty bad, too. Uh, he, he definitely seems like a guy who's just desperate, right? Like, he's like a drowning guy who comes up for a little bit of oxygen. He's just desperate to tell his story because he's been underwater for so long. Uh, and I like the guy. We're going to have to go piece by piece with him, though. I mean, it was just, it's just there's moments there where it's like, you know, we, it's just too much. And I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm not saying he's right. I'm just saying, like, what they've uncovered, I think, ultimately, uh, with TCR, I mean, this could be massive. Now, then again, it could be nothing, right? And so, look, I'm looking forward one day, as I said at the beginning of the podcast, I'll say it again. Look, TCR, right, equal time. You want to come on the podcast? You want to have your lawyers? You want to show up? You want to tell your side of the story? Answer my questions? I'll be fair to you. I'm fair to all my guests. I'm happy to have you on, and I'll let you tell your side of the story as well. Uh, but... I mean, I look at this organization as foreign owned, and I wonder. I mean, I definitely do wonder. Uh, but okay, uh, Brittany, what'd you think? I thought that guy was really interesting. He's like you said. I kind of got that he was very passionate and wanted to tell his story. But yeah, it was a lot that he spoke about, and I'm still absorbing. But I really enjoyed the interview with him. Yeah, he was. There was just like a, a tremendous intensity. I really like the guy again. He's got like the sincerity. Like you can't yeah. take away from him that he's speaking, you know, his truth. Mm -hmm. But I just, I, we just need to be a little more linear, mm -hmm. I think, sometimes in order for, for me at least to kind of absorb it effectively. Uh, Tori, what'd you think? Um, I thought he was great. I, I thought that, you know, the passion definitely showed. I mean, I think that's also maybe why he was a bit unlinear because everything was so connected to other events and he just didn't know how to, you know, express everything that needed to be expressed in this, in this entire situation in a simple, you know, ABC format. It's a difference between like litigators and regular people, <laughs> right? I mean, to us, it's like, no, no, bit, 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 <laughs> bit, mm -hmm. bit. And if you're over here, you're up here, no, 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 stop it. <laughs> What's the next little bit, right? That's the way my little brain works. Some will call that linear, some will call that slow. Either way, uh, that's the way my mind operates. You tend to be a little less linear. Um, so I think maybe you guys were melding. Yeah, maybe that's what was going on right there. She understood everything. Yeah, jo jo Johnny. Yeah. Break, it, yeah. break it down for us, Tori. Yeah, Tori's like, what's the problem? He, he said everything just right. Um, John, your first podcast, Mr. Hansen. Uh, it was, first of all, fantastic to have you on the show. You did a great job earlier today. Um, what did you think? Uh, I thought he was very good. And if you listen to the message instead of how he's all over the place at times, like there's a story there and it's very, very interesting. Uh, and the complaints, I've looked at the complaint. Uh, that he mentioned, and it's really interesting. And he has surrounded himself with some incredibly credible people. Uh, so it it's very interesting, and I'd love to uh, sit and talk to him more. Yeah, I think we're going to dig into this more, John. I, I mean, and that's that's the thing, right? And as we talked about earlier in the podcast, I'll just kind of reiterate, right? Like. I, I didn't get into this to come pick on TCR. Like I, this was not my angle, right? I mean, I saw one little letter by Latham and Watkins in the FCC record. I just thought it was interesting, um, and then he, and then here we are, right? Uh, the only reason we're having this podcast is because these MEF guys kicked Pooja off. I mean, if like they hadn't done that, we wouldn't even be talking about this, right? And that's just reality. Yeah. And now, 
I mean, we're going to follow this to the ends of the earth, as long as it's credible. Like, we're not going to spin our wheels with some conspiracy theory or some muckraking nonsense. Like, we're not going to do that. Uh, but I agree with you, John. I mean, the, he, and what you said is important. It's not just that his story has elements of truth. It's that the people he's aligned himself with are credible and, and veterans, right? Not just, you know, of the I mean, literal veterans in the U.S. military, but also veterans of the industry. Um, and that does speak to credibility. So, you know, John, I'd love it if you like, kind of took a couple of look at things, maybe, maybe do a, a blog, you know, sometime in the next couple of weeks, kind of looking at some of the other, you know, the Rick Joyce stuff that he keeps mentioning, um, the pieces that I'm, I'm frankly, I'm just not going to dig into that stuff, but maybe if you have a chance to take a look at it, um, let's do it.